Hey guys, so we're back again to give you more insight of my hack Sonic Eraser. Last time we stopped the first chapter screen and we're just about to jump into the overworld, so let's pick up from there and move on. First off, the name. Quite honestly, I hate it. A lot. Uber a place happens to be one of the dumbest names in the entire hack, but my imagination was simply not good enough to find something better. In version 3 it's still at the original name of Sonic 1, Spring Yard Place. Though that of course needed to be changed, seeing how the only spring here is the one that leads you to the options menu. For some time in version 4's development it was called Selector Hub Place, but that just happened to be even more terrible. So I just made fun of my own language, because the over from overworld translates into über. Long story short, I combined the previous name and this one to get uberhub at least to get something, although it was planned to be a temporary solution first. Yeah, stuff randomly sticks with me all the time. Anyway, let's talk about the overworld itself by working our way from left to right as we move along. So seeing how I was talking about the options menu a second ago, why not give it a visit? But hold on, before we do that, let's take a look at the way the giant ring moves whenever you enter one. Redundancy at its finest but you should know by now that it's the small details I like the most. Actually, that is the reason why Sonic Eraser is such a short game. With so many little things here and there, I was rather focusing on quality than quantity. Sure, I could've just slapped in a million levels and mindlessly put shit everywhere, but I've noticed that most hacks working by this principle didn't get much feedback. It wasn't like this in the first few releases, but with years of time to expand the hack, I also put more effort into polishing it into a level that made me feel good. But yeah, options menu. I still like how this thing went along. That incredibly redundant intro animation of the text alone took almost an entire week to bring to perfection, although the way I did it was way, way more troublesome than it should have been. You see, instead of simply moving the lines for horizontal scroll buffer that is used for parallax scrolling, I've modified the entire text string like a billion times to get to my desired result. But then, maybe one month after completing it, I learned how easy it would have been otherwise. But I didn't rework it, at first obviously because I already wasted so much time on it, and also to always remind me that I should, you know, do some thinking before I start coding. Well, the options menu itself is pretty much straightforward. You know, stuff like extended camera, which I absolutely love, while others hate it to death. Sonic's art to either make him resemble the original sprite sheet that was modified to erase our standards, or the one from Sonic 3, and that terrible, unlockable option. It was my last desperate attempt to have something in there, because I've set up the placeholder only a few days after I've started working on version 4. But I've waited until the very last minute to make something out of it, but I don't think I thought this through enough. First off, it's not unlocked by simply completing the game, which could be translated into failure number one because it was already an incredibly dumb decision. Instead, you had to play to the end of the game, go to a place where you normally go to the ending sequence and credits, and do a precise jump to find a hidden button that enables this mode. Atmospheric mode. It disables all sounds, plays music without drums, removes HUD, and gives you constant crop vision. By the way, am I the first person to ever have a Sonic hack with crop vision? Anyway, it was completely stupid. At first I had the plan to call it Sonic Rape Mode, an old, let's say, colorful hack from 2010 and give you constant seizures. But that was dropped for being way too over the top. On the other hand, the atmospheric mode may be interesting, but it's a hmm nice thing, but grows old in seconds. Looking back at it, I should have added an option for a constant in human mode after simply completing the game and have a hidden level at the hidden overworld spot, but whatever. Apart from that, the options menu has an option that deletes the save game and a sound tab, both being completely self-explanatory, so let's move on. Back at the overworld, we are first greeted by this ring, which lets you replay the tutorial and rewatch the intro cutscene. In version 3, however, it only let you do the latter, so it was kinda pointless, but yeah. <laughs> but it was quite entertaining to see almost every single Let's Playing person on YouTube jumping into this ring and be like, oh, what's the point of this? 
could have easily been fixed by creating a sign that says rewatch intro, but I was simply too lazy to make one, so fuck you. <laughs> okay, now the level selection itself. Another great mistake here was that my stupidity made the tunnels go down instead of maybe teleporting you upwards. I don't know if it happened to you, but I fell into the wrong tunnel by accident so many fucking times. It was annoying to say the least, but I couldn't be bothered to change them because I already created the entire overworld around this concept, including the level signs. By the way, those signs are almost completely hand-drawn. I've used a font with a nail I can't remember, but I still remember that it worked incredibly bad with low resolutions, so I had to do manual fix-up for almost every single pixel. It took me around half an hour to create even one of these signs. That's why I tried to avoid them as much as possible, which is why special stages don't have them. If it wasn't for the sake of consistency, I wouldn't even have bothered to create a new one for Scar Night Place. So anyway, you drop down the tunnel to the level you want and BOOM you're there in Night Hill Place! We will focus on other parts of the overworld in future episodes, since the rest isn't as interesting anymore. Cut! We won't only focus on that in other episodes, but also on Night Hill Place in other episodes. I wish this one could have been a little bit longer, but... <laughs> I recorded over half an hour of audio material back in February, which was intended to be used for the Overworld and Night Hill Place. But I just couldn't be bothered to edit everything in one go, so I just did it for the first few minutes and dropped work on it for many, many weeks. I've just done the rest on the Overworld and figured I'd finally release it as it is and hope to get the rest done soon. TM. So yeah, next time we will focus on Night Hill Place with its bosses and obviously Green Hill Place. But on top of that, provided I will ever get my lazy ass up and actually start doing some work, I'm also going to answer questions. If there's anything you'd like to know about Eraser, or me, or my pet goldfish which I don't have, just put it in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Apart from that, I have nothing else to say. Enjoy the following bloopers of me failing at English. I'm Selby, and I'll see you around. Bye. Then maybe one month of then may then maybe one month then but then maybe one month 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 but then maybe one month after completing it I learned how easy it is <sighs> Then maybe one month <sighs> Then maybe one month I krieg dieses Wort nicht hin Month Month to resemble an old, let's say, colorful hack from 2010 and give you constant scissors. Scissors. Fuck. Scissors? Scissors. Scissors. Fuck. Scissors. I don't. Fuck. Nah.